the Puritans. The word conjures up images of ascetic religious solemnity, invoking austerity and spiritual purity. The Puritans were all this and more. One might go as far as to call them religious zealots. Zealot here is not a derogatory term, but a grounded depiction of their way of life. The Puritans believed very strongly in their religious sensibilities and were willing to do just about anything to see them be carried out. As was often the case with new religious movements, the title of Puritan came from the opponents of this religious movement, who ridiculed them as being unrealistic purists. Those labeled with this title took up the challenge, declaring that they were indeed Puritans, just as their adversaries had claimed. The Puritans were successors of the Protestant Reformation that shook the Catholic Church to its core. The Reformation was sparked when a Catholic monk named Martin Luther began questioning the official teachings and narratives of the Church. On October 31, 1517, he nailed his 95 theses to the doors of an abbey called All Saints Church, also known as Castle Church. Luther ignited a dialogue that led to a new movement among Christians, and soon new denominations began to spring up. Before the Reformation, the Catholic Church, whose very name Catholic is the Latin derivative of a Greek word meaning universal, had positioned itself as the universal church in the land. After the Reformation, several denominations in Europe competed to gain faithful converts. Martin Luther became a primary leader of the Reformation, but he was not the only one. Close on the heels of Martin Luther's rise to prominence was a man named John Calvin. John Calvin is crucial to the history of the Puritans, as it was upon his subsequent doctrine of Calvinism that many Puritan beliefs and thoughts would be based. John Calvin was a French reformer who, after fleeing his native France, set up shop in Switzerland, where he preached his beliefs on predestination. Like Luther before him, Calvin stressed the need for faith for Christians to achieve salvation. And also like Luther, he believed that salvation was not something someone could earn through good works. Rather, it was something one could only achieve through faith in God. He preached that man is truly humble who neither claims any personal merit in the sight of God nor proudly despises brethren, or aims at being thought superior to them, but reckons it enough that he is one of the members of Christ, and desires nothing more than that the head alone should be exalted. He believed that whether we come to faith in God or go astray and turn our backs on grace and faith, all of it had been predetermined in advance. This viewpoint would become an important fixture in the life of the Puritans. In medieval Europe, religion and politics often went hand in hand. Persecution of minorities, whether ethnic or religious, was quite common. In the beginning, the Puritans were religious reformers who sought to separate English Protestants from the last vestiges of Roman Catholic tradition. In neighboring regions like Switzerland and Germany, the Protestants enjoyed considerable religious freedom, making their brethren in England quite envious. While England entered the Reformation shortly after Martin Luther nailed his theses to the church door, it took time for Protestantism to take hold. The English Reformation's initial cause was also much different. It began due to a falling out between King Henry VIII and the Pope, which led the English king to separate from the Mother Church and declare himself the head of a brand new church, the Church of England. Even though he was theologically opposed to Protestant thought, the excommunicated Henry wanted the annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon to stand. In many ways, the Church of England was Catholic in all but name. Many of the Catholic Church's doctrines and rituals carried over to the Church of England. Perhaps the biggest difference was that the Pope in Rome no longer had any authority over the English. King Henry VIII's declaration as head of the new Church of England opened up the floodgates, and a religious reformation began to take hold in England. The Puritans were against the Catholic Church and sought to purify the Catholic teachings. The founders of Puritanism did not intend to start a new religious movement. They simply wanted to cleanse the Protestant Church of England of underlying vestiges of the Catholic Church. One of these early reformers was Thomas Cranmer, an Archbishop of the Church of England. With the progress of these reformers, the Puritans would become even more puritanical, soon rejecting just about all other Protestant faiths that differed from their teachings. Protestant gains were overruled in the era of Mary I, who was also remembered as Bloody Mary. Before long, it was a crime to engage in any religious practice outside of Catholicism. Queen Mary I angered England's Protestants even further when she married the Catholic stalwart Philip, the King of Spain, in 1554.
close on the heels of this marriage was the announcement that Catholicism in England would be officially restored. Then, in 1555, Mary went a step further by putting Catholic laws regarding heresy back in place. This renewed push against heresy would cost Protestant reformers such as Cranmer their lives. This persecution forced many Protestants to flee to Switzerland. After the death of Mary in 1558, a dichotomy emerged among the following British monarchs. They realized that the best way to deal with a religious disparity was to walk the fine line between Catholicism and Protestantism, without leaning much towards either. The Puritan Protestants wished to eliminate this tradition since it seemed to harken back to Catholicism. Considering the Protestant reforms in some other parts of Europe, the Puritans were ashamed of the slow pace of the Reformation within the Church of England. This sentiment was summed up in the anonymous tract Admonition to the Parliament, authored in 1572. The tract proclaimed its disdain, stating, We in England are so far off from having a church rightly reformed, according to the prescript of God's word, that as yet we are not come to the outward face of the same. Queen Elizabeth I was a middle-of-the-road reformer regarding domestic affairs and a stickler for keeping the status quo. However, while she sought to maintain the slow pace of reforms at home, she was quite progressive when it came to her Protestant policies abroad. Queen Elizabeth became a kind of Protestant crusader when it came to taking on Catholic Spain. She was a staunch supporter of the Protestant-leaning Netherlands, which King Philip of Spain was actively trying to bring back into the Catholic fold. The political and religious dispute between Britain and Spain escalated to war when Spain tried to invade England in 1588 but was repelled by the British Navy. Many Protestants and Puritans alike viewed this success as a sign of divine providence at work. After Elizabeth's passing in 1603, more Puritans became hopeful regarding her successor, James Stuart, a champion of the Protestant sect known as the Presbyterians. Before being crowned in England, he was the King of Scotland, where the Presbyterians hailed from. Also known as James VI, he became King James I after the Union of England and Scotland in 1603 and proved to be uninterested in most of the suggestions put forth by the Puritans. He did agree on one important point. There should be a new English translation of the Bible. The King James Bible was welcomed with open arms by the Puritans, who had been calling for an English version of the Bible for all to be able to freely read for many years. The Puritans, however, did not have the favor of the king when it came to their battle against priestly vestments. Many puritanical Protestants ended up getting booted out of the church simply for declining to wear them. The Puritans in the Church of England began separating and creating their own religious movement. King James was a Calvinist, but a reformed Calvinist movement called Arminianism started to find its footing in England. To tackle the so-called Arminianism controversy emerging in Protestant circles, the great minds of Calvinism came together in the Netherlands in 1618. King James I sent his representatives to the conference to argue for the complete rejection of Arminianism. Such efforts pleased the Puritans. These positive developments were enough to keep the more vocal voices of the Puritans down, and many were content just to engage in what they called practical divinity. But soon after, in 1619, some Puritans felt it expedient to circumvent the will of their king when he decided against backing his son-in-law, Frederick, the new king of Bohemia, in his struggle against Catholic forces during the Thirty Years' War. However, besides some clandestine efforts such as these, most Puritans were willing to tolerate King James as long as he in turn tolerated the main tenets of Calvinism. In 1622, King James issued a command to safeguard the public from religious confusion. Only those who held a Bachelor of Divinity or higher would be permitted to teach predestination, further upsetting the Puritans. Many Puritans sensed further trouble ahead when King James allowed his son Charles to wed a French Catholic princess. And when Charles I came to the throne in 1625 and began practicing Catholicism openly, they felt that their worst fears had been confirmed. The arrival of King Charles led many Puritans to seek a new place to plant their faith, the Americas. The Pilgrims and others came to America on the Mayflower, making their home in Plymouth in 1620. But many are unaware of just how much religious piety drove these settlers to leave their old world for a completely new one. It was not in search of gold or land that the Pilgrims, who were separatists, although they shared many things in common with other Puritans, embarked on this dangerous voyage. They wanted religious freedom and a chance to build a society according to their ideals. 
Today, Plymouth is a city in Massachusetts, but initially it was a part of the general colony of New England before separating off into the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The pilgrims who settled in Plymouth were led by William Bradford, among others. Before even stepping foot on land, the pilgrims famously signed the Mayflower Compact, in which they dictated how the colony should be run and how their individual lives should be lived. This document would prove pivotal in shaping America. The philosopher John Locke, whose famed social contract later influenced the very creation of the Declaration of Independence, cited it. To say that the words of the Mayflower Compact were influential would be an understatement. Upon landing, the pilgrims began building up their settlements and practicing their principles. Not long after, the non-separating Puritans sailed to the Americas. However, the non-conforming Puritans did not break away from the church like the pilgrims did. Rather, they sought to fix it from within. Further waves of Puritan migration were in the works, and by 1630, a Puritan leader named John Winthrop was leading the so-called Great Migration of a large Puritan flock to the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The Church of England was far too oppressive and retroactive for English Protestants, who wished to reform how their religious services were carried out. Even though the English had broken with the Catholic Church, in many ways it seemed that England was Protestant in name only. With all the trappings of the Catholic Church intact, it was foolish to pretend otherwise. Only when the situation was no longer tolerable in England did the Puritans begin to look toward the Americas as a permanent refuge for their flock. To learn more about why the Puritans left England, check out our book, The Puritans, a captivating guide to the English Protestants who grew discontent in the Church of England and established the Massachusetts Bay Colony on the east coast of America. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free mythology bundle ebook while they're still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.